that, that's killing them on the inside. If it's an affair that someone's had, or if it's something that's just uh, something they had against you, or that they've done against somebody else, Father, we just, Father, we lift them up. Would feel your touch, Lord, that they would know that you're that you're pursuing them, that they would know that you're and it's not near as children, Lord, but you want to you are with us and give them the revelation of who you are, that you are with them always, Lord. And that comfort the family, comfort the families, God, that are walking through this this complete tragedy right now, Lord. And uh, I just pray that the, that, the, that the local government, Lord, we lift them up to be able to come up with a, a drug coalition that, that, that knows how to go against these terrible things that can come in to love people, not just chastise them legally for doing something that's against the law, but rather lift them up and give them a leg past this and move on. And they can be children of God and not and not have to experience such tragedy death of yes, something Lord. that was that, that they could have prevented. Yes. So Lord, I lift up Cody's family and I lift up the family of uh, of uh, of someone that goes to another church here in town. We lift them up, comfort them in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Sorry to start out negative, man, but um, I'm gonna wear my heart on my sleeve kind of guy, so you guys are gonna see that. Um, so, yeah, it's cool. Thanks for coming up, guys. It was amazing. It was really, really good. You can uh, completely feel the spirit just flowing through the guitar, man. I tell you what, man. I love it when we can flow on a piano. It, that's cool. But I love it when someone flows on the guitar. Seriously, because you don't have that as much as you have people that can flow on the piano. And I'm trying, not trying to minimize that because Ben does an amazing job flowing on the piano, but when you flow on the guitar, it's just different. God's created so many sounds that we, some sounds we can't even understand. Pray that God can give you a new sound because there's sounds that are in heaven that we can't, that we've never heard before. There's sounds that, that, are, that are, actually, this is really amazing. Light has sound. Light has a sound. And they've actually slowed down light to the speed of sound so they can hear it so that they can so that we can have better uh, so we can increase our technology because the way to transfer data faster is by the speed of light not through the speed of sound so they need to slow down the speed of light to the speed of sound so they can hear the sound the sound of heaven is amazing and we've only scratched the surface on what that is so uh, thank you guys for coming tonight man I, I'm actually really happy I was gonna I was gonna count it out. The last two weeks, we've had about 80% women and 20% guys. I like we got some guys out here tonight. Man. This, is, this, is, this is awesome. You know, we were talking about this at our church on Sunday morning. There's a lot of women that go up front and worship, and there's a couple of guys, and that's cool. But come on, guys, we gotta rise up. Man. Come on, you know, the women gotta rise up on Monday night for Awaken the Dawn. We need some men. To worship like David did, man. Come on. Worship, man. Worship God in the in the secret place first. I'm not saying go out on stage to just jump around. I'm talking about developing your spirituality, your walk with God, and just let it live out in the world, man. Oh, it's, it's good, man. So uh, I, I want to lay a foundation real quick before I go into my testimony. Oh, often. No, I'm, no, I'm going to get to that. Okay. I'm going to get to that. I'm going to give the word first. And so, uh, sorry, I got too much going on in my brain. Slow down a little bit. So, I want to suggest something to you. All in worship, we're hearing Father, and we're children of God. What was the first song you sang? I have no idea. Heart won't stop. Father, God, children of God. All right? So, I want to suggest something to you right now. This is something I, I dialogued with somebody last night. And I wasn't expecting to share this. It just popped in my head and I wanted to share it. So in Genesis 5.21, we read about Enoch. And it says, uh, it says that Enoch lived 65 years and then had, then had his son Methuselah. And then Enoch walked 300 years with God. He totaled his, walk, he totaled his life of 365 years 
then God took him for he was not. So for 65 years, Enoch walked, then he had a son. And then Enoch walked 300 years with God. I don't know if he walked without God for 65 years, or and then after that he had an experience with his son, but there's something about the father and son relationship that brings you close to God. And that in that, there's a depth of a relationship that God desires with all of us, that he wants you to come home with him. And so I don't know Enoch's story. We don't know much about him. You can do research in other books and read about him, and that's cool. But just if we go with what's written in Scripture, you don't get very much. But if he walked 65 years, and then he had a son, and then he walked 300 years with God, imagine what your relationship with your Heavenly Father would be, and he would take you and you'd be with God. It'd be crazy. It's pretty amazing. So I'm not suggesting that God's just going to take you. What I'm suggesting is that the father and son relationship with our Heavenly Father, we need to start there. You need to start there with God. If you don't start there with God, if you start it with theology, if you start it with doctrine, you're going to crumble later on in life. Trust me, man. Because I'm going to go into my testimony of how I was raised and where I am now, and I'm actually going to talk on unity tonight, so i got to fit all that in. Because it's not just about unity, like Brian said, about getting all these different denominations inside here, and then revival is going to come. That's not what it's about. Unity is totally different. But so I want you to think father to son. I don't want you to think denomination. I don't want you to think religion. I don't want you to think doctrine. Theology is great. Doctrines are okay. Theology is good. I like it. But that's not where you need to start. You need to start as being a son. Because when we see in Genesis with Adam and Eve, I see a father who wanted to love children. Even though they sinned, God still pursued them. God was walking in the midst of the garden. Adam, where are you? He was looking for Adam. Not Adam, uh, not God saying, get out of here. No, he was still pursuing Adam. This is a loving father that's pursuing us. He pursued us so much that he gave his only, Jesus came down so that we can, so that we can truly be with him. And, uh, yeah, so. Father, son. I was raised Catholic. I'm just going to drop it like that. So I was raised Catholic, and uh, it didn't start till I was in the third grade. And um, I absolutely loved it for a long time. I wanted to be a priest, but then once I knew priests couldn't get married, I decided that was not cool. And so I <laughs> desired myself a wife, and the Lord provided that. And uh, it's been, it's had its ups and downs, but it's been amazing. My 17 years together before to be married. But so. Uh, I, I, in, in the Catholic church that I was raised in, I was the youngest altar boy ever to be allowed to serve in the church. They had to be, I think, in the fifth grade. So I don't know how old that is now. It's been so long since I was in that age. But it was, I was in the fourth grade when I was able to become an altar boy. And I did not have a bad experience with being an altar boy. There's a Experience. I had an amazing priest as a child. He was a great guy, he, even though he smoked cigarettes. And like he, you could see him smoke it when he'd go from the church over to his house in between service. And I always just thought that was cool because that made him real. That didn't make him this like far off person. It was there was a level of realness that was awesome. But so I loved serving the Lord. And then uh, in the, a tragedy hit my family in 1993 or 1994 rather. And uh, our house burned down and we lost everything. Everything was gone. Our, uh, we, we lost two dogs and we were, uh, nobody, my siblings were okay, my parents were okay, but we lost two dogs. And, uh, but the house, we were out of it from April until Christmas. And so that was a really rough year because it was very eye-opening on practical level of what, of what caused the fire, but then on a family level that we got really close as a family unit. Like we got really tight. A new priest came in who was not very kind, and so we kind of started to go away from church. And then when the new guy came in, my eyes were kind of open to the rhetoric of the of Catholicism that wasn't very, that wasn't very pleasant. You know, I loved certain things about the Catholic Church, but I was my eyes were being open to a lot of the things that were not right. 
And so I didn't like it anymore. But as a family unit, we grew really tight. So the topic that I'm going to talk about is unity. So within my family, we got very close and we were unified. But yet we walked away from the church. The church wasn't like, like embracing enough with us. But as a family unit, we got really tight. And then uh, I, I started on a really bad journey after that. I got kind of inclusive. I stopped uh, playing sports for a period, started smoking weed and doing drugs at a very young age. And then uh, I just, it was downhill journey from there, man. Even though on the outside I was working, I became a chef and I you know, went to school for it, I met my wife, but all along I was living with this depth within me that I couldn't understand. And it was really that I was running away from something. Because once I really surrendered my life to Christ, it was in the it, it was in an early morning moment, and it's the sweetest because my subconscious I dream very heavily, so I can wake up rather exhausted, and so I'm trying to like figure out my dreams. I'll write some down, but this morning it was very light, and I woke up and um, and, and I heard the Lord say Nick, and I've never heard the word a audible voice of God before or since that moment, but I heard the Lord say Nick, and I sat up and I knew it was him because I'd never heard. A voice like that before and then in, and then and the only thought that came into my head was unify the body of Christ and so I just I, I, I was marked that morning it was about it was probably like eight or nine years ago very early on in my journey with Christ my true journey with Christ as a child I knew who Jesus was but I didn't know him as father I was telling my friend Bobby tonight at dinner that it was a moment where I knew God as Father that things changed. I knew Jesus as God because I saw him every Sunday morning. I saw him in my dining room on a cross. I saw him at church on a cross, in school on the cross. So I knew who Jesus was, but I didn't know God as Father. And then I had this moment where God provided something in a time of need that only he could know because only my wife and I knew about this financial need that we had. And somebody just gave us money that fulfilled the need that we had. And so in that moment, I knew it was the father, my father, my father. I'm going to be selfish here and call him my father, even though he's all of ours. But he became my father that day. And everything changed. Come, just like that time that marked me when I heard his voice, this marked me when I was standing now his father, provider. He gave me something that only he could really know about. And so that happened and then the, uh, marked by unify the body of Christ. And so my journey with the Lord since then has been this unraveling of the church ever since. And I don't mean unraveling as in trying to pick out the things that are wrong with it because I love it how Todd White says it, that that's God's girl and I don't want to talk bad about God's girl because that's the truth, man. I love you guys. I love the body of Christ. Even though, like, a guy that we used to listen to years ago, he said that he had more, he had, he had better friends when he was in the world drinking in a bar than he did in the church because the church world will backstab you. And I, I got backstabbed plenty in the world that I have in the church. If you welcome that in your life, it's going to happen to you. If you're easily offended by what people say, it's going to hurt you. But if you're not allowed yourself to be offended, you can just love people. Guess what? I found some of the best friends that I've ever had in the world since I've been since I've been on this journey with God. I've got great friends that I've had for a long time since before this journey, but I've met some lifelong core friends since I've been in the church. It's good, man. It's God's girl. God wants the church to be unified, and not in a way that it becomes passive. He wants the church unified that we stop allowing ourselves to be broken over a bunch of different little topics. Right. It's not worth it, man. Amen. What did Brian just say? And I'm, and, and I'm, I'm kind of irritated that we've allowed ourselves to be divided over such little things. How are we going to preach fear when Jesus literally said, go out into all the world and make, na make disciples of nations? He didn't say go out and cause fear to be able to bring people into the kingdom. Fear drives people away. Fear drove me away. 
I'm 14 years old. I had a great relationship. I was 13. Great relationship with the guy who was the priest, Father Thompson. I wish I could see him today, just so I could, just so we could dialogue about things. Because I'm in a different place in my life where I want to hear where his thoughts are on some things, where we could talk theology. But then he leaves because the church says every seven years he has to go to another place. That's terrible, man. Because the next guy that came in, hellfire and brimstone, you're all a bunch of sinners. Every one of you is going to hell. I'll be right there, God, right there with you, God. Let's do this. You know, that really fires me up that we're going to burn in hell. What in the world is that? So I'm like, you know what? I don't want nothing to do with your God if I'm going to just burn in hell. What do you, why would you? So how can we unify the body of Christ? Seriously, this is a rhetorical question. You can reply if you'd like. I'm totally good with that. How are we going to unify the body of Christ? Number one, you can't fail. You'll never learn the language of love of what Christ talks out. We just do as I teach what I did, do as I did. You're never going to learn that if you can't fail. It's okay to fail. I, 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 I was 27 years old. I bought a restaurant. Three years later, we didn't make it. Did I let that define my life? No. Because God's bigger. Yes, there were, yes, it was a yes, things went wrong and, and it was a bad time to do that. However, that doesn't define who I am. If you allow yourself to be defined by the doctrine of your church over what God, who God is in your life, and what the Bible says, you need to look in the mirror. For the, for the community of Front Royal, not to come in here so we can teach you doctrine. Not so you can come in here so you can hear Brian share amazing stories of people getting healed, which that's part of it, because he's not going to share that in some other churches in town because they don't. Christ in him crucified, that's it. That's what I want to hear. If you're not teaching the cross, and you don't have to teach the cross by pointing at it and giving a dissertation about the cross. The cross is the beginning part of your life where sins went to die, and then I'm not going to go into all of the other things that it represents from a Hebrew perspective, but the cross represents the beginning of your life with him. If you don't preach that, you don't have to preach that by talking about the cross. You preach it by living a resurrected life because God is alive inside you. And it's so good that you can't not share it. It's so good that you can't take two minutes and say something to somebody. I work for a company that I'm in front of customers all day, and I want to share Christ so bad sometimes. And it's not like I want to just preach at them. I just want to share a story. Like, because I love, I love telling stories. I love having conversations with people and being able to tell stories. But I know that I'm limited because I'm working for a company. And so you're, like, dancing this line all the time, and it's rather challenging. And I'm, I just had a conversation with Bobby tonight about working for corporate America is really tough, man. Because yeah. you're limited in some of those ways. But when they open but Christ is alive. But you're exactly you're new. Your new creation. Christ is alive inside of you, right? You have everything. You have the fullness of God alive inside of you right now. You'll never be more or less ever because you have said yes to Christ and you have got the revelation. You have alive inside. You. You'll never have more of God. You can never have more of God because He's had. You have the fullness of the living God alive inside of you already. Hallelujah! Right. So unity. In the community within churches is really challenging, okay? I know there's other people in this room that have been on this journey way longer than me. And so, I, and I, I saw as a kid, even though I was not completely in tune to why, everybody went to a, or some people went to a Baptist church, or some people went to an Episcopal church, or some people went to a Catholic church, or my grandparents went to a Methodist church, but then my parents go to a Catholic church, and my mom had to convert from Methodism to Catholicism, and she had to like go through this whole process and I'm like, as a kid, I'm completely confused and not understanding of why she had to go through this, like, 
whole like like years worth of like vetting this person out. Like, is she getting a loan? Like, is she at a bank trying to like finance a house? Like, why does she have to go through so this is long, drawn out process of changing one to another? And I was always confused. Like, wait a minute, am I a Christian? And my mom said, yes, but you're a Catholic. But I'm a Christian, right? No, you're, you, yes, but you're a Catholic. So why, why are we, okay, now I'm a subcategory of this. So now I don't know if I identify with this first or that first. Is this my box and then I have another box over top of that? So like, how does that work with the hierarchy and levels of, of life? How confusing is that to a child? Can't we just tell a child, you are a child of God. <coughs> Raise them as such. They will believe in the God that you have raised them in, just like Abraham to Isaac, and just like Isaac to Jacob. And they will become the God. So we lead the youth a lot. And I've been leading the youth even before I was walking with the Lord. We always had teenagers around us for some reason. So we teach our kids all the time that he needs to become your God, not your parents' God. Just like Abraham to Isaac and Isaac to Jacob, that he became the God of Isaac. He became the God of Jacob. If you vicariously live through your parents' relationship with God, when you go to college, it's going to be really rough. When you stay home from college, it's going to be really rough. Because you're going to experience things that you didn't know you had that, that were around you, especially when you're in a place where you're away from your parents. So, he needs to be your God. But we're talking about unity. We're talking about unity looks like men and women not, not allowing themselves to be separated by divisiveness anymore. Divisiveness is such a terrible thing that we allow ourselves to be split over words. We allow ourselves to be split over doctrine. Just because this church believes this thing, this believes no. Please hear me clearly. And I'm talking to people that are watching online talking to you guys here, please hear me clearly that God wants a people that are sold out for Christ and Christ alone. If you're here to build your own kingdom, it's going to fail. Ask any cult leader if they're still alive. That's not, I'm not, it's, a, it's funny, but it's true. Ask any, ask any leader of something where it gets to a certain point because it's all built on this man or this woman. It's not built on the kingdom. It's not built because they want to see Christ alive in everybody. It's only built on what this person's thinking or what this person believes. So we follow this one man. We're to follow people, but we need to know that you need to know you have, you got it all. In Acts, when they quote Joel, I believe it does say that the Spirit will come on all, fle on all men and women, all flesh, right? Not just a few. In the Old Testament, we had some people that had God, like, 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 why, like what happened with Enoch, man? Why was that so cool that God couldn't have taken him? Why was Noah so close to God that God chose Noah? What was up with him? He was a righteous man, but what did he do that was so righteous? How did he love God so much? And then David, how could David love God so differently that he could literally get a guy killed after he took his wife, but yet God didn't kill David? That's crazy, man. It is. Like these little pockets of people in the Old Testament had these beautiful relationships and it's this beautiful picture, but then, at the, but then when Jesus came and he resurrected, the Spirit is for every single one of us. Right. So if we're not bringing that out, if you're not in your job talking about that to somebody else, living it out, God should literally be every part of our life. I don't normally read the message version of the Bible, which is fine if you do. I'm just not a fan of that. But I like where it says in Romans where Worship is everyday life. Everything that you do, you're walking and going about life. We teach teenagers, it's how you wash and shower and honor your parents and do your homework and be kind to your friends. That's worship to God. Every 
bit of our lives is this. And so if we're going to have unity, if we're going to have unity and not from the aspect of being passive and just allowing people to just do something, you know, do something that's wrong. No, that's not what it's about. Unity is not allowing pride to stand in the way for there to be an absolute love revival in this town. I live in Winchester, and I want that there too. It's happening. It is. I see some pastors that are doing some amazing things. We're doing a, a series at our church right now, and we just heard that another church in town, which is much larger than ours, is doing the exact same one. And we did not communicate. We picked to do the same thing for small groups for seven weeks to do this. And one of their groups, a couple that goes to their church, can't attend any of theirs, so they're able to go to one of ours. That's unity, man. We didn't try to do that. That just happened. That's what happens when we seek God. We allow ourselves to be humble before him, that we don't allow pride to keep sneaking and reared its ugly head so that we can't live these uh, a glorified life, that we live a life full of hatred and gossip and, uh, and, uh, and, 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 and workspace. It's just amazing. So uh, how am I doing on time? I'm good. So, Jesus is good, right? Oh, man. I'm so glad you guys didn't say that other thing. I normally had to say it in some places. Um, so, uh, we need to support one another. We need to work together for the community. We need to also attend another church's service sometimes. Seriously. You know, go to a special service, man. You know, you, like, so this, actually, no, we missed it at the Sunday, so I can't say that. We were going to go to another church's picnic on Sunday, but we decided to enjoy our weekend together. And uh, But attend another church service. Um, religion brings change. This is an obvious one, but I really feel like we need to say it. Religion brings change, and Jesus brings freedom. There's a whole other message about Jesus actually brings liberty, not just freedom. We, we went to Haiti for a missions trip, and it was blatantly obvious that the country got free but didn't know what liberty was. The United States was, was founded on, on liberty, that there's responsibility. It's not just you're free, have at it, you, you can do whatever you want. Freedom is great because it releases you from bondage. However, liberty means that you're doing it for a cause. Liberty means that I'm doing it, do it. There's responsibility with it, that, that, that it's not just, here free, do whatever you want, man. You have, you have, now you have the responsibility to create a society. So uh, we need to make sure that we recognize the chains of religion, but the freedom of Christ. And I'm going to finish with Matthew 28, where when Jesus says to go out into the world to make disciples, just like what Brian said uh, before I came up here, that we are not to be preaching fear. We are not to be preaching fear and the end of the world is coming. We're to preach that the thief is going to come in the middle of the night and you're never going to know. But that's not that you need to live in fear. And I love it. Somebody I heard say, not that you don't have to pay your credit card this month. <laughs> no. <laughs> We're to pre go out to the world and make disciples of nations. And you have a nation around you. We live in a place that's very culturally diverse. I didn't think I was going to see, if you ask me the best restaurants in Winchester, I'm going to tell you three that are all ethnic restaurants. Not one of them is, quote unquote, would be considered like an Americanized restaurant, your Cracker Barrels or your Applebee's. No, uh -uh. it's going to be a taqueria. There's this little hole in the wall. When the moms are there, they don't speak English. But it's the best tacos in Winchester. The, the Asian food is another restaurant, you know? So, America's culturally diverse. We live in a society of unit that should be unified because everybody has a unique perspective. But we need to make disciples of nations and not of our own kingdom. You're making disciples of your own kingdom, just like I said about cults. You're wearing black Nikes and you're going down, man. <laughs> you're going to go down our um, And so... Uh, Hold on, let me catch this one thing, and then I'm going to invite you, if you could come up, and then, uh, so, 
I, I know this road, I like to do things a little differently. And I wanted to take the, I wanted to allow you to be able to give into the ministry, but I wanted you to sit for a second. And I wanted to share this because I want to talk about what, how Emily and I are partnering with this ministry here. So we're, so we lead the youth at a church in Winchester and, and we are fortunate enough to be able to serve as elders in that church as well. And so it's been a, uh, it's been a very good experience it's been a really good experience for us because we've had to walk through some challenging things in that journey. It hasn't been just this, you know, beautiful walk in flowers where it's springtime and everything's wonderful. No, we've had to walk through some challenges. And it's been such a blessing for us to be in the place that we have because it's been able to be healthy and, and, and be able to walk through this and know that there's not a plan B. Know that there's only a plan A. And that's the same thing with Christ. God did not say Jesus was a plan B. Jesus was a plan A. Okay? His plan was to pour his spirit upon all flesh. And it, he chose to do it through his son. Okay? So Emily and I are partnering with this ministry, with, with, with the Love Revival, with Front Royal, because we, as God told me in the very beginning, unify the body of Christ. That's my heart. I took, I'm in tons of leadership stuff with Horror. I, I like reading some leadership books. I'm not a super fan of them because a lot of that stuff's kind of already just ingrained in me. I like to read that kind of things, but sometimes it can be a little, a little drab, a little boring. Sometimes it's like the flavor of the month. But partnering with communities around us is part of how I'm hardwired. Okay? So my, uh, something I'm, well, I'm, I'm a chef by trade, even though right now I sell auto parts. I love food. I'm, yeah, you can't tell. I love food, okay? And I love good food. I love to cook, and I love to, I love to, uh, to, I love when people have an experience with something that I've created because I know that it's not me, that it's God who's worked through me. Because I'm humble enough to know that I really don't know what I'm doing. Like, like honestly, like some days I get up, like I don't know how to sell auto parts, but I just do because I feel the spirit. Only God can take a chef and put him in charge of multiple auto parts stores. I mean, seriously. So Emily and I are in this with Brian because we feel his heart. We know what he wants to do. We know the vision that God's given him here is not for himself. This isn't for Brian to make it be cool, okay? If Brian wanted to be cool, he would go to New York or some other big city, maybe L.A., but probably New York or L.A. L.A. is a little warmer, so he might like L.A. You know, and go be cool out there, okay? I've learned a long time ago that... <laughs> you ain't in this to be cool, man. If you're in this to be trendy and to be cool, you're going to get exposed real quick. Real quick. So God does amazing things. We partnered with a church in Hamilton, Alabama for a long time. And I gave to this church faithfully. They had my credit card on file so that every month I donated money because I believed in what they were doing. And then one day... When my, my card changed and I got a new one, I couldn't update my information on their website. It was really frustrating. And so it took two months for me to actually hear God in it. I called them up two times. I tried emailing them and nothing would change. I couldn't get an answer on how to update my information. And so in that, the Lord said, you need to start putting that money locally. And it changed. So we're faithful tithers at our church. I'm not asking or saying you need to tithe here, okay? That's not what it's about. The, 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 the beautiful thing about being here is that this goes into 100% of any money that you're, that you're able to give goes into what we're, what, any of the building funds, okay? Food or paying the bills here, whatever, okay? So if you can give, wonderful. I encourage you to pray as much as you can give, okay? 
because that's not about, this isn't about money, but you know, life, buildings cost money, okay? I don't take a salary, Brian doesn't take a salary, okay? Mandy serves here a lot, I'm sorry. Abby, Abby serves in there, makes you a great cup, cup of coffee, hallelujah. And they're here worshiping with us, man, okay? So we've partnered with this ministry, okay? We, I, 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 I encourage you, if you've thought about that, whatever you want to do, man, okay? So if you want to give tonight, there's baskets up here. I'm going to pray, and then we're going to worship a little bit more. If you need prayer for anything, I'm going to encourage you. Brian's going to be here. I'll be up front. Mandy's over here, too. If you need prayer about something, come see one of us. Pray with somebody next to you. If you hear the Spirit leading you, pray with somebody else. You don't need, you, you don't, you have permission to pray for each other, okay? You have permission to pray for each other. You don't need to come to one of us to be prayed, okay? Pray with your neighbor. Pray with somebody else, all right? So I'm going to pray over the offering. And then if you'd like to partner with the ministry, you can go to uh, to a Love for Revival. We don't have a website right now, but BrianKaiser.com. BrianKaiser.com. And so uh, you, it's a PayPal thing you can set up. We did it. It was super easy. I did it on my phone in like five minutes. And it was super, super simple. But um, if you have an offering tonight, great. Pray greater, okay? This isn't about convicting anybody that doesn't have anything to give because I don't have anything to give to the offering plate tonight, okay? So it's not about just giving. It's about healing, Lord, that, that, that uh, I love it how that we can get a fresh filling of the Holy Spirit, that it's not just this one-time deal, that the, you get a fresh filling of the Holy Spirit. So, Father, right now in Jesus' name, we just pray a fresh filling of the Holy Spirit tonight, Lord. Fill us afresh with your Holy Spirit tonight, Lord. Lord, forgive us of any sins that, that we might be holding back from you, Lord. You see everything. There, there, there's nothing that is not hidden, that's not hidden from you. Father, we just pray in Jesus' name for wholeness and love to be bestowed upon everybody in here. Upon Front Royal tonight, Lord. Love, Lord. Pour your presence out in the streets of Front Royal, Lord. Upon the business owners, upon families upon the lawmakers, upon the judges, the lawyers, Father, the local business owners, Lord, any anybody that needs you tonight, Father, I pray that, that, that they are quickened to your presence tonight, Lord. That they are quickened to your presence tonight, Father. In Jesus' name, just pray your spirit fresh upon all of us. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. So let's worship a little bit more if you have something to give. Put in the baskets. You can pray off the door. Coffee shops open. Put Abby to work. <laughs> and then, uh, in Jesus' name. <laughs> Thank you. 